Yes, this is another covenant. All these are covenants I'm, I'm showing you. All of them are covenants. When you enter into them, you enter into a covenant. So I just spoke about Barak. So this is kind of a continuation of what we just spoke about. So I'm going to show how this ties into the last section we just went to. Y'all check out this uh, video. Let's roll that beautiful bean footage. And the reason it's on my server, and it's going to be for as long as I could possibly keep it there, is because of what happened last Sabbath in the middle of the night as we were all sleeping. I think it was like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. They passed those laws. And, uh, and so I downloaded the IRS 501c3 manual for a reason. Notice what it says here on page 4, because they haven't changed the manual yet. This is what it says on page 4 of the IRS instruction manual that all the pastors must read before signing on to this long prophesied 501c3. Now, I'm not going to read all of it, but I do think most should. Uh, but, I mean, the truth is, this is something all of us already knew about the pastors, right? We already knew that. Uh, that in mind, and if you notice here, like I said, I'm not going to read all this, You can, because there's a lot more than you see here on this one page, but uh, it does say that the holder of the 501c3 can jeopardize their tax-free status by committing certain acts listed in the manual. And to give you an idea, like on this page here, on page number four, it does say that the pastors must not influence legislation or intervene in any political campaign whatsoever. And if you read on in the following pages, they go into pretty good detail as to how the pastors cannot say thing one about any political candidate or law, past, present, or future, to their congregation. Now, we know that all changed as of, well, not all of it, because they didn't change the entire 501c3, of course. Like we were saying before, that one video I made before the uh, uh, the election, uh, Trump cannot remove the 501c3. It's a prophecy that's going to hold firm until the eastern sky splits. But he can rewrite it, and that's what he's done here. And, uh, and so why is this all a problem where they can't speak politically in the past? Well, besides the fact it removed free speech from the pulpit, we all know how evil politicians have become in the last few generations wherein they passed all sorts of laws allowing very sinful things to be normalized in society that the pastors themselves could have stopped. And that is the main reason Lyndon Johnson set up the 501c3 in the first place. He hated the way the moral compass of the churches prevented him and his cohorts from passing laws that would destroy our Christian society. And so the 501c3 was written to prevent the pastors from saying anything to the church families about the sinful plans of the government. This is why society is such a mess today. I mean, since the government approved pastors refused to jeopardize their bank accounts by saying something to stop what our elected leaders wanted to do, just to name a few, and there's a lot of this stuff online you could find, these anti-Christian laws out there that our pastors could have said something about. Because they refused to say anything, because they didn't want to lose their tax-free status, this Christian nation legalized the killing of babies in abortion clinics. They could have said something then, but nope, that was after 1954. They legalized the use of doctor-assisted suicide to kill your sick loved ones before they could even experience a healing miracle. And they legalized homosexual marriage, which is now causing major problems for Christian business owners all over this nation. As a matter of fact, there's something going on right now in the Supreme Court about it. And the 501c3 even prevents the pastors from warning people about the government schools that teach evolution as well as homosexuality as the norm. And thanks to these preachers of filthy lucre, as they're called in prophecy, the word of God is now considered hate speech in America. Now, yes, thanks to what happened last Sabbath morning, these government-approved pastors can now endorse political candidates, no matter how evil they may be, and even lobby for religious laws, no matter how unbiblical they are. But here's what most missed. 100% of every pastor that has gained the 501c3 contract with the second beast of Revelation since 1954 read the entire 501c3 instruction manual before signing on to it. They had to read it before they could sign it, right? And so that means they knew for a fact that when they signed it, they would be unable to legally preach the truth about killing babies, their grandparents, or even allowing homosexual marriage, just to name a few. But they signed that contract anyway which shows they are more concerned with saving money than they
fact, the single biggest gap in party affiliation among white Americans today is not between men and women or those who reside in so-called red states and those who reside in blue, but between those who attend church regularly and those who don't. I think we make a mistake when we fail to acknowledge the power of faith in people's lives, in the lives of the American people. I think it's time that we join a serious debate about how to reconcile faith with our modern pluralistic society. And if we're going to do that, then we first need to understand that Americans are religious people. Ninety percent of us believe in God. Seventy percent affiliate themselves with an organized religion. Thirty-eight percent call themselves committed Christians. Whatever we once were, we are no longer a Christian nation. At least not just. We are also a Jewish nation, a Muslim nation, and a Buddhist nation, and a Hindu nation, and a nation of non-believers. And even if we did have only Christians in our midst, if we expelled every non-Christian from the United States of America, whose Christianity would we teach in the schools? Would it be James Dobson's or Al Sharpton's? Which passages of scripture should guide our public policy. Should we go with uh, Leviticus, which uh, suggests slavery is okay, and that eating uh, shellfish is an abomination? Or we could go uh, with uh, Deuteronomy, which suggests stoning your child if he strays from the faith. Or should we just stick to the Sermon on the Mount, a passage that is so radical that it's doubtful that our own Defense Department would survive its application. Exodus, this is why it says this, 23 and 32, thou shalt make no covenant with them nor their gods. The God that they preach to us over here is not the God of the Bible. The God that they preach underneath the 501c3 contract is not the God of the Bible. They have approved verses that they can read and approved things that they can teach. I'm not knocking all the churches, but let's be honest, y'all. Most of them, they walk that line. This is why people can get on Facebook and say, or, or Instagram or YouTube and say, man, I'm learning stuff. I've been in the church 30 years. I never heard this. Or they never taught this. It's not by, by mistake. Now, don't get me wrong. I do think that there are some that are deceived, but again, to whom much is given, much is required. I'm going to need the people that are teaching to look into what I'm talking about here. What does that 501c3 mean? It's a covenant with the government that enslaved you, that gave you the slavery Bible. They gave a Bible how to make a Negro a Christian. Why would they do that? Why would they beat our language out of us and then remove parts of the Bible, y'all? Because I'm even seeing things from the Septuagint. You dig? Going up into the King James Version. You look at, for, for 375 years, they had the Apocrypha in there. Then they just, just took it out. Because they never want you to understand who you are and understand how important it is that we follow the Most High's truth and that we walk like Christ. That's the three things they do not want. They do not want 
This is why the whole Mitchell thing when Kanye and and and, and, and Ky- Kyrie, even though Kanye went kind of all off left field, but some of the stuff he said was was correct. Was the fact he got this fame, he got these platforms, and people weren't even really listening until they blew it out of proportion. Then look what happened. Y'all hear me, Israel? Because that he he, the thing about this Baphomet contract thing that I talked about in that in that last video, they're not allowed to say certain things. This is why. Like, I, I keep showing y'all this over and over. This is why when these artists put out albums and, and, and songs, they have to sit before a boardroom and get a, and get approval. Did y'all know that? Have y'all... I, I, it's for my hip-hop heads. Have you ever heard a track and it said unreleased at the bottom? You ever seen that? That's because they didn't get approval to release it. They had to leak it underground. And then they couldn't get no money from it because the record label... Zaddy, the white supremacist system, didn't approve it. Especially if you're talking about something real. Matter of fact, there's a um, a track Most Def made that got him banned. This is why when you see him on the Chappelle show and doing this and doing a voice for Gangsta Delicious on um, Boondocks, then all of a sudden you just didn't see him anymore. Well, he made a he made a track, y'all, and this track got him blacklisted. So this goes back into the 501c3. These the synagogue of Satan gave their doctrine of this new age Christianity to the pastors. They've even said this. They say we're going to, they call them Goyim. They're going to give the Goyim their interpretation. That's why so many in the church believe that those people over there are the people. Through which all Christians in America can act on their love for the state of Israel Christians united for Israel, which, as you can see by looking around this room tonight, is rapidly becoming the most powerful Christian movement in the United States of America. In the United States of America. The king of the Khazars converted to Judaism and made it the state religion. Incredibly, within a few centuries, the people of Khazaria convinced themselves that they were not Gentiles after all. Today, the Ashkenazim, or Khazars, are the vast majority, about 80% of those who call themselves Jew. And they've never heard Revelation 2 and 9. They never heard Revelation 3 and 9. They never heard Deuteronomy 28. They never heard Leviticus 26. They never heard Genesis 15. I can go through so many chapters. Uh, chapters in Ezekiel. I mean, they haven't heard them and looked at them in their truth when it's talk. There's so many verses about captivity. And then you want to enter into a covenant with these people to read the book that your forefathers wrote for you. You don't think Deuteronomy 7 and 2, thou shalt make no covenant with them. Now, this is in context of a, of a war, but he's still saying the same thing. Make no covenant with them. Okay? This is why when we awaken, I'm not saying if we got married before to another nation and that nation decides to cling to Israel and follow the truth. 
I'm not going to knock that. I'm not going to knock that. But once you know who you are, know who you are, your children are, we got to we gotta stay within Israel, man. That's why he said um, uh, the thing about the marriage. And, and, and what's wrong with marrying somebody that's, that's your nation? That That's how you build. That's why the most I put it in there. Second Chronicles 19 and 2. Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, should you help the wicked and love those who hate the most high and so bring wrath on yourself from the most high? So you, you're going to help these wicked people continue in their system? Don't you know when you put your hand with the wicked, it gets popped too? Though they walk hand in hand, they shall not go unpunished. This 501c3 contract that these churches have signed is walking hand in hand with the wicked, y'all. This is why you said, like I said, there's a small remnant of pastors that'll go and talk about the white Christ being a false Christ. If he's our salvation, why would you lie about that man color? Why would you preach lies about Eastern eggs? I can't find one verse with an egg in it painted. This is a whole different God. When you have a covenant with them, you have a covenant with their God. You're worshiping Ishtar and Nimrod and, 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 and Februs. Isaiah 8, 11 through 12. For thus the Ahia spoke to me with mighty power and instructed me not to walk in the way of this people, saying, you are not to say it is a conspiracy in regard to all this people call a conspiracy. And you are not to fear what they fear or being dread of it. Because when you speak like this, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. The most I called it way back in Isaiah 8. You're, you're, you're a conspiracy theorist. Oh, you're woke. Now they say woke. No, I'm awakened. You need to wake up. You dig what I'm saying? This ain't a conspiracy if it's facts. You know, you get 99 years for conspiracy. So conspiracy is a real thing. They've conspired against us. Let's watch this, though. doesn't really make really make sense to a lot of people why would it say obey you know no independent thought and then consume these words continue throughout the movie now let me show you this so what you're about to see is an actual broadcast of a sign-off a station sign-off from the 1960s and it's been subtitled but you'll see the subtitles are just helping you read the text that is rearranging it's one of the better known subliminal messages that's ever been found So that was an actual station sign-off from the 1960s. 
that was played every single night that everyone basically watched before they went to bed. My question is this, how did they know they, how did they know the efficacy of that sort of subliminal messaging? It was obviously intentional. The obey, consume government. Where governments lie, God does not lie. Where governments change, God does not change. And I'm through now. But let me leave you with one more thing. Governments fail. The government in this text, comprised of Caesar, Quirinius, Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate, the Roman government failed. The British government used to rule <laughs> From east to west, the British government had a union jack. She colonized Kenya, Ghana, Nigeria, Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, and Hong Kong. Her navies ruled the seven seas all the way down to the tip of Argentina in the Falklands. But the British government failed. The Russian government failed. The Japanese government failed. The German government failed and the United States of America government when it came to treating her citizens of Indian descent fairly, she failed. She put them on reservations. When it came to treating her citizens of Japanese descent fairly, she failed. She put them in internment prison camps. When it came to treating the citizens of African descent fairly, America failed. She put them in chains. The government put them on slave quarters, put them on action block, auction blocks, put them in cotton fields, put them in inferior schools, put them in substandard housing, put them in scientific experience, experiments, put them in the lowest paying jobs, put them outside the equal protection of the law, kept them out of their racist bastions of higher education, and locked them into positions of hopelessness and helplessness. The government gives them the drugs, builds bigger prisons, passes a three-strike law, and then wants us to sing God bless America? No, no, no. Not God bless America. God damn America that's in the Bible for killing innocent people. God damn America for treating us citizens as less than human. God damn America as long as she tries to act like she is God and she is supreme. Towards the end of the 2008 campaign, the Republican Party, terrified at their own sinking poll numbers, attempted to link Barack Obama to radical leftist figures to make him appear un-American. First was the controversial Reverend Jeremiah Wright. I say mother America, mother America, mother, mother America, daddy, America can America can let the But you see Reverend Wright there, right? You see what you see what he was saying? May the most high keep that 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 man. May the most high keep him. You dig what I'm saying? That's the type of preaching I would sit in for. Now, the only thing I would say, you gotta leave Sunday and the holidays alone. Do it on the Sabbath, keep the holy days. I'm I would sit right in the congregation. Now, of course, I got my own thing, but that's that kind of preaching though, I could sit in on that. Let's talk about what's really going on. I don't want to hear about getting a house, getting a car, and all that. Oh, that's cool, getting a house and getting a car. But what about these curses when a cop dragged me out that new house or when a cop pulled me over in that new car? What about that? How about that? You know, how about understanding the history of this country for what it really is so I don't fall into these traps of Democrat, Republican, and 501c3. This is why that this is why they it came for that man after he said that. Because that was breaking the contract. Because they tell you what you can and can't say. Amos 5 and 10, they hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. Call you all types of names. I've been called demonic. You're a demon. You're antichrist. All, all you're you're a, a race baiter. You're you're an idiot. All type of stuff. Never about the information I bring out. But 
just to show you, there's 20 churches that experts say violated the tax law. So when you're when you decide to speak on issues that you're not supposed to, and that stuff gets documented, oh, all them people coming for you because you signed a contract with them. See, I don't, I ain't signed no, I ain't signed your Hebrew tribes ain't signed no contract with them. Militian ain't signed no contract with them. You dig what I'm saying? Your boy G did not sign on the dotted line. I say what I want. I'm going to keep it on YouTube policies now. But I say what needs to be said. So, you see, they say 20 churches. And you see here with some of these Israelite camps. Now, I'm, I'm going to say this too. Because I'm not one to sweep things under the rug. But with some of these Israelite uh, camps, I do believe that there's agents in some of them. Their modern day exodus began in 1966, a time of racial violence in America. But the master's work had just begun and the people were beginning to cry. Back then, Ben Army was known as plain old Ben Carter, a bus driver in Chicago. A bus driver who had a vision. And the angel Gabriel did come to bring the word of God that it was time to start the journey back to the promised land and to establish the long-awaited kingdom of God. All Yahweh property, ready to fend off intruders and to execute Yahweh's will at any cost. This is a charade. Marvin Dunn, a prominent Miami psychologist and educator, is one black leader who sees danger masquerading as divinity. If his members want to believe that he's performed miracles, if he wants to believe that he has performed miracles, so be it. There are some of us here who are not stupid. Is that what you think he's doing? He's preying on stupid people? No, no, I don't think his members are stupid. Um, any more than the people who followed Jim Jones to Guyana were stupid. Like Jonestown, the nation of Yahweh is closely held. All who enter are monitored and searched. Sentries, once trained to use clubs and machetes, are posted on all Yahweh property, ready to fend off intruders and to execute Yahweh's will at any cost. On October 30th, 1986, they did just that. So, so Yahweh, Yahweh ain't no goddamn. That was the day Anthony Brown. Hey, Yahweh don't pay daddy. And Rudolf Broussard refused to move from a housing complex the Yahweh's were about to purchase. I'm going to stay here until I get eviction notice. I don't care what they say. I do, because they ain't going in. Just as simple as that. Ten hours later, after quarreling with staff wielding Yahweh men clad in white robes, Brown and Broussard were shot and killed. This Yahweh disciple was arrested and confessed to the murders. He was sentenced to 22 years. His given name is Robert Rogier. The Yahweh's knew him as Neariah Israel. Was he a close associate of yours? No closer than you. Well, I'm in the media. He must have been an enemy of yours in that case. Apparently. I mean, was he one of a close, small circle of people? No. I don't have a close, small circle. My circle is Yahweh. How did you feel about what happened there? I'm against murder. I don't teach murder. It's obvious. But Robert Rogier says he was taught to kill. He testified in federal court this April about his role in an elite circle formed by Yahweh Ben Yahweh for the sole purpose of eradicating enemies. The group has its origins in the Bible, where God's assassins were called death angels. Have you ever heard of the death angels? I read about it. Do you have any? Do I have any? No. Yahweh has plenty. What does that mean? Oh, you read about it in the book of Exodus. When Yahweh killed the firstborn in the Passover, uh, somebody did it, and it was those under his charge that did it. We have to ask you a question. Well, let me, How many of your fathers here? Just be for real. If you're a father. Now, now, 
what, what if someone is overwhelmed by the spirit of the most high God and he reads your scripture and he take your daughter and he just rape your daughter? What do you say to that? If he if he live like you live, walk like you walk, talk like you talk. Because you you y'all live amongst each other. Yeah. Y'all live amongst each other. So what happens when one of y'all feels so overwhelmed by the spirit of God that when you see one of each other's daughters, you just grab her up? You going to tell one of these brothers here? Come on, you know the doctrine. You know how it get when you get... Well, well, answer, 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 answer. We just, we just told you that... that how would y'all respond? This, in this time... Not, we're not going to let that, was, that was But if it did happen... Hold on. Black, if it no, did happen... But if it did happen, you would let allow it to happen. Why? Yeah. Because you go back to the scriptures. You're supposed to be a brother. Hold on, hold on, hold on. your brothers to rape Wait. your daughter. You're saying rape as if uh, rape simply means to grab. Oh, no, 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 no. We're talking about no, we read the verse. We read the verse no, where someone was so in the kingdom of heaven. Hey, no, 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 no. no, no, no. We read the verse, man. When the kingdom is established, we're going to get women when they 12 years old. Right. All right? Say it again. As soon as they start in the kingdom of heaven, when their period starts, that's when they become a woman. Okay. All right? So we're going to deal with them when they when their period uh, uh Starts. Right. Well, they must be started. Have, oh. have sex with them. Have babies, man. With 12 year olds. Brother, there's this. In the kingdom, we're going to do that, man. We're going to get them young. <laughs> very elaborately made with his portrait and his nickname, The Comforter. Since 2001, Grant has produced the Archangel Awards, a version of the Grammys for musical artists who are vowed loyalists to the Israelite church. The most often of them is Wanya Morris, the lead singer of Boys and Men, a popular R&B group that's won four real Grammys and sold over 60 million records. According to the former members of the church, Grant has instituted mandatory tithes and general offerings from his followers. Also, during his 2006 I Will Not Leave You Comfortless tour, in which he toured six East Coast states in eight weeks, Grant reportedly demanded an additional $25 per attendee in the form of an additional high priest offering. Another world tour is planned later this year. Grant who did not reply to a request for an interview to this article, is an energetic man. Under his leadership, the Israelite church had expanded rapidly, and its 
Hidden Truth television programming can be seen on public access channels around the country. Meanwhile, the tone of the extremist Hebrew Israelite grows ever more apocalyptic, with his followers feverishly searching for signs of a bloodthirsty black Yahweh's impending return. This summer, well, according to the time of 2008, Grant boldly predicted that a hellish earthquake would soon herald the return of Christ and the beginning of Hebrew Israelite rule. Um, everyone knows that, you know, just, just a side note, but everyone knows that uh, Jesus had prof prophesied about earthquakes in diverse places in, in all the Gospels. So it's nothing new. Anyway. Who was the first comforter? And if that not have been a man? We are about to challenge what you believe. You're telling me that you are the Holy Spirit. If you do not wish to be challenged, you should leave now. I am the comforter that Christ said would come. That was him. The comforter is the Holy Spirit. Show me where you the comforter in the scripture. First of all, I'd like to thank the Most High in Christ for sending the God sent company. So overwhelmed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Comforter. Some of these dudes out here are going to tell on you, man. We have four cops in the hood. We're all for it. Bring more. So we're for it. We're four cops in the hood. We have four cops in the hood. We're all for it. Bring more. Don't stop and fest. I'm calling the cops. I am snitching. Your ass going to jail. If I'm in your neighborhood, you're going to jail. If you are wanted, I'm turning you in. That's a fresh free $2,000. That's good. Wanted $2,000. That can help my nation with that money. <laughs> if you're wanted, you're going to jail. I will tell on you. I said openly, if any of you out here I see on the list being wanted, your ass going to jail. And you win. We snitch. I'm calling the cops. We snitch. We snitch. We snitch. Some of these dudes out here are going to tell on you, man. At high level. I've showed this. These brothers have came out and said that they down with the cops. They came out and said all types of things. So I'm not going to ignore that. I'm not going to ignore that. You dig what I'm saying? And yeah, this brother here talking about he's the leader of the black. He, he ain't my leader. First of all, I ain't no black Hebrew Israelite. That's like saying I'm a black African, African American. I'm an Israelite, man. That's it. I don't need black Hebrew African Really don't need indigenous, but I like that term. I'll use it. But yeah, I'm an Israelite, man. And he ain't nobody leader. They always trying to put a lead. You see how they always trying to put a leader? No, the truth is the leader. The father's the leader, as he says in, in, in 1 Samuel 8. So just to show y'all, and I told these brothers, you know, because some of these camps, which that's what they call the Israelite churches or camps, some of these camps are 501c3. And they 
they be breaking the contracts so, and, and they be having a member sending their social security and and, and and serial numbers on their weapons, man. Look, mama ain't raised no damn fool, man. That 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 sound real oppy. Real agency. You did what I'm saying? I, hey, that's why I think some of us uh, ex-criminals and and and, and ex street persons and and club girls and whatnot that that left that alone, but we remember what we learned from that. We gonna be able to spot these undercovers and these agents out here because we lived it. We seen we seen it. Did what I'm saying? So let's go and so that that's another covenant, and it's another covenant to get you what away from the Father, as I've shown. So let's get to Freemason.